Join me for what is quite possibly the final unboxing. All right guys, so I'm low-key very excited to share my unboxing with you today for several reasons. First, it's a bag that I've wanted for a very long time, nearly 20 years, believe it or not. It's also gonna be the final unboxing on my channel for quite some time. No, this bag isn't like a holy grail, like eight, $10,000 bag, so it didn't break the bank, but there's gonna be some changes coming to my closet and they're pretty exciting, so no more unboxings for a while wishful thinking though, but no more unboxings. That is the plan. Anyway, guys, if you're new to my channel, my name is Caleb. I post luxury and lifestyle related content when every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So that's something you're into, which I mean, between us, I'm assuming it is because you're here, right? Right. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Say hi in the comments. Let me know if this was a bag that you wanted, that you had, or like what variation you like. Let's get a conversation going. I am super excited <laughs> to share with you my newest bag. This was a bit of a journey. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be one of those channels that makes you wait for five minutes. I'm just gonna tell you real quick, my background, hunting for this bag, and then we're gonna get it out, okay? Basically, I have wanted a Marc Jacobs, a vintage, like vintage, I use that term loosely because I'm 34, and these bags are only about 15, 20 years old, so not vintage yet. Don't do that to me. I have been searching for a good, like, older 2000s Y2K Energy Marc Jacobs bag, and I finally found it for literally a steal. If you all remember my Poshmark Nightmare, I was trying to find the multi-pocket hobo, which made an iconic debut in The Devil Wears Prada, you know, the whole scene where Andy meets up with her friends, hands the bag across the table, and yada yada. You know the story, we've all seen the movie about a thousand times, literally. That was an absolute fail, the seller never sent my bag, but if you want more information about all the drama, which trust me, the tea is piping hot, link will be down in the description for that video. I recently then found one in person, stupidly didn't buy it, regret it to this day, it's, to this day, it's been like literally three weeks, but they wanted $125 for it, which I mean, was a little much in my opinion for, for what it was in its condition. However, <laughs> what is it? Patience smiles on, what is it? I don't know, insert some sort of quote at the bottom about patience and finding the right item because I struck gold, you guys. Let's get it out of the box. I'm gonna show you what I got and then we're gonna dive into it. All right, without further ado, let's get this bag out so I can talk to you about it because I am low-key so excited, you guys. So I was able to get my hands on a beautiful Marc Jacobs Venetia. <laughs> I am so excited. You're like, ooh, who is this guy and why is he excited about such an old bag? Listen. I have a story for you. So this bag is from Marc Jacobs' eponymous, you know, upper end collection line of the early 2000s. Back in like 05, 06, it would have retailed for I think like 9.95 at the low end. It eventually got up to like 11, depending on like finishes. Some even sold for as much as three to 4,000, which we'll talk about here in a minute. The reason why I love this bag so much is if you all remember when Marc Jacobs was the creative director at Louis Vuitton, this bag was a direct ripoff of the Manhattan in the monogram, which I absolutely loved. And I finally have the Venetia version. So with this bag, you know, it, it's kind of scratching several itches, if you will. And that's why I bought it. Also the price, which we'll get to here in a minute. Now this bag, as I said, it, it is a direct ripoff of the Monogram Manhattan GM. I wanted one of those so bad back in the day, not even gonna lie. Back in like 2006, 2007, I didn't have, you know, a couple thousand dollars to drop on a bag. How times have changed, thank goodness. However, <laughs> <laughs> that bag was not a possibility for me, nor was this one really at nearly a thousand dollars. Anyway, as time has gone on, I've seen how like the, you know, the Manhattan ages, it's not really on my list anymore. So I wanted to find this version. Now also, if you guys remember the multi-pocket hobo, like that still is like in the forefront of my mind. I'm still constantly checking all my websites for like the right one at the right price. And now that I got such a good deal on this, I am not willing to settle on the hobo version. I'm just not. So as you all know, this collection from Marc Jacobs was absolutely fabulous. A lot of these were made in Italy and the quality is phenomenal. This bag is probably like an 06, 07. I think it's a it's an older one, not gonna lie. And I love that I was able to find one with without the contrast stitching. I think the contrast stitching with the push locks kind of ages the bag, whereas like the tone on tone really kind of keeps it a little bit more current, a little bit more fresh, you know what I mean? Now the Marc Jacobs Venetia came in several fabulous iterations. This is just one of the plain leather ones. There's a gorgeous version that was actually full chinchilla leather with lizard skin pockets. 
I found one on eBay. I know I said no more unboxings, but like seller, if you're watching this, like send me an offer. I can't refuse, please. I absolutely love this bag. Now when I got it, it was in kind of a rough shape, not gonna lie. Very musty closet storage odor. The hardware was in such rough shape. Now with these older Marc Jacobs bags, especially with the silver hardware, if you just have like a jewelry cleaning cloth, it's gonna polish the hardware up really beautifully. On the backside of the hardware, I got lucky and the owner actually left the stickers intact, which I do not recommend, especially with much nicer bags. But in this instance, they mostly cleaned right off and they look beautiful. <laughs> but this beautiful little belt strap over the top, it's kind of reminding me of my Louis Vuitton Suhali Longinou GM. Say that five times fast, because I'm not going to. And it's just like a really beautiful bag of its era. Prepare to be jealous. What did Caleb Snell pay for this gorgeous bag? Pause the video, drop it down in the chats. Like obviously it's not much, like these sell for pretty much next to nothing these days. But I got this on shopgoodwill.com for $46. <laughs> Talk about a steal of a deal, you guys. Like I am not kidding. I am so freaking jazzed about this bag. Now, part of me is like reliving all of this Marc Jacobs era goodness, because aside from like, I think I had one or two Marc by Marc Jacobs bags back in the day, I slept on the I slept on the full price line, the, the, the full on like gorgeous Marc Jacobs collection line, slept on it like an idiot. Like I let all these beautiful bags go by and I'm happy to be jumping on the bandwagon now. And mark my words, he is redoing a lot of his bags like with the re-editions. He just redid four of the Q-Line bags. A moment of silence, but the most beautiful one of all, the Marc Jacobs Stam bag has just been re-released. So we were actually with Lux Petit at uh, Neiman Marcus over the weekend. You're gonna see all of this in the upcoming weekend vlog here on Friday at 4 p.m. Central Time, don't miss it. But we were at Neiman Marcus as one does after brunch and they had beautiful like museum display cases in glass of the small stam, the large stam. And seeing it back in a department store setting was giving me all of the 2005, 2006 It Girl vibes. And I was 100% here for it. Like I literally, I think I, I think I went around that little glass display case at least five or six times. That bag is such a vibe. So when it comes to other Marc Jacobs bags of this era, like what else am I interested in adding to my collection? Personally for me, I think that this is just a little bit too small for me to wear like every day. Like this is with certain outfits, like with this it would look totally cute. This isn't really like an everyday like sporty kind of look or you know really well put together kind of look. So this is gonna live in my closet, which for $46, I don't feel too bad about. I wanna get the multi-pocket hobo, of course, the large size with the four feet, says the guy who's not doing any more unboxings. But listen, the right bag comes along, I'm gonna snap it up, just, just so you know. Now with this bag, I have absolutely want the chinchilla version. Like have to have it, perfect winter vibes. Like I'm just at the chalet in Gestad having my hot cocoa with my chinchilla bag sitting next to me. My Montclair, you know, ski look on. It's a vibe, 100%, we're here for it. Can I pull off a stand bag? Can I not pull off a stand bag? Do I really care what people think? Cause it's 2023, wear what you want. It's kind of where I'm leaning at this point. So again, I'd have to find one for a really good deal, much like this one, cause it's not gonna be something that I'm gonna wear a whole lot if you get what I mean. But like I was saying at the beginning of this video, like why is this the final unboxing? Like Caleb Snell, you unbox at least two or three bags a month. I don't need you calling me out. First and foremost, it's my life, it's my closet, it's my wallet. No, I'm just kidding. This is the final unboxing for a good minute. I'm kind of like reworking my closet, revamping it, like thinking like what works for me, what doesn't, like what do I absolutely love? What do I wanna see when I open up my closet door? Listen, this is probably bag 95, 96 at this point. We don't know, we've lost count. I think there was like 88 or something in my bag collection video. And it's too freaking much. And 90% of it doesn't even see the light of day. Like there's like 10 or 15 bags that I want to use and I use all the time, like my Fendi Peekaboos. And I need more Hermes. I know, I'm one of those people. Like I bought an Hermes bag and now like I just compare everything to Hermes leather. You're gonna see some big changes coming on this channel style, style wise, aesthetic wise and we're here for it. Anyway guys, thank you for joining me today. If 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 you wanna learn more about the Venetia, let me know down in the comments. Now listen, it is a very obscure bag from like 15, 20 years ago almost, almost, not quite almost. So not a lot of people are probably researching this or if they are, they're just gonna look at very old articles if you can search for them on the purse form or the purse blog. But if you wanna know what fits or what like a cute little like review moment, let me know, I'll make a short. I don't really think it's like full on video worthy. If you want a short, I'll totally do it for you. But anyway, until the next video, you guys, stay safe, have fun. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I got that. There was parts of it that I'm thinking it's trying to drift back down. Is it heavy? 
That's a heavy bag. So we can learn to lift it up. So then maybe refilm, switch the camera. Did you think of that? 